Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to show you a highlight on something very special. This is a script tasker that is going to help us resample these images down to 300 ppi, both effective and actual. If I'm speaking Greek to you, whenever I prep my files for printing, both the actual and effective PPI of that image should be 300. Let me show you. If we look over at my links panel, we can see that, scroll over here a little bit so you can see. We can see that these images have an actual PPI of 300. This is great. However, because the images are not at 100% in my document, the effective PPI, what the printer is seeing, is actually quite a bit higher. Some printers will not even accept PPIs this high. Uh, sometimes if you submit a book to Amazon, to KDP, or to Ingram Spark, they will actually reject a file if you're PPI is too high. If there's too much resolution, um, it makes the file really big and it can affect the way that the print looks in a physical book. So what we want is we want these numbers to match. We want both the actual PPI and the effective PPI to be 300. There is an excellent little script it's labeled Trista DPI. Um, I use this script frequently all the time. However, the one caveat is that that script cannot identify multiple instances of one object. Um, if we look here, we can see that I have this file, the sunset spread. I'm using this file two times from the same link. So my InDesign file is pulling the same image out of my file explorer and using it in two instances. There are no scripts that will correct the effective and the actual PPI of a singular link that has multiple instances. What needs to happen here is we need to duplicate this file into two instances that can then both be adjusted down to 300. Let me explain. This is my sunset image. I'm using it here and I'm using it here. In this instance, it is much smaller than it is over here, which means the effective and the actual PPIs are going to be different, even though it's one linked object. I could fix this by opening up this document in Photoshop, duplicating it, and then adjusting down the actual size, the resolution of these images, to make them match exactly what I have in my document. But if you have a very large book with 200, 300 plus images and multiple instances of the same image, you do not, do not want to open each of them manually in Photoshop and adjust all of the resolutions down or up depending on what you need. So, I have made a wonderful friend, Rob, over at idtasker.com. Let me show you. This is idtasker. Now, Rob is a brilliant, brilliant coder. Does amazing things that I've never even seen before. He's working on his tool called idtasker and design tasker. It's essentially a script launcher. Rob has written some amazing scripts um, that do things I've never seen before. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. I'm gonna do a highlight on this particular task, the image resizer, using Rob's ID tasker. Let's hop back to InDesign. All right, so Rob's script launcher, it's not exactly like other scripts. If I go to my scripts panel, um, this is where I have saved ID tasker. You could save it anywhere on, on your machine. I just keep it in uh, my scripts window just for sake of ease. Now you will need to get um, an activation key for this tool. It's not a free tool. Rob spent a lot of time making this, but when you launch it for the first time, it's going to ask you for an activation key, which you will have to get from him. Let's go ahead and launch it. Your computer will likely ask you 
um, to verify the software. Yes, that's fine. Here's the little reminder telling us, yes, the program is not free. Um, we have to register it. Click OK. I've already entered my key, so I don't need to repeat that process. Here is the interface for ID Tasker. Now this looks like a whole load of nothing until you get used to it. What we are going to do for this demonstration is use the image resolution tasks that Rob has made. There are three parts to this process. I need to load in the tasks or scripts that Rob has made for this process. These are actually contained in text files, which I will load in via this button right here at the top of the screen. When I click load tasks, I need to now navigate to where my tasks are located. I also keep these in a folder in my scripts panel just for sake of ease. Pro tip, if you want an easier way to navigate to your uh, scripts or your panels, you can simply right click in your scripts and tell it to reveal an explorer. This is going to quickly jump me over to um, my file explorer where my tasks are located. Then I can copy my address here, go back, load my tasks, and I can simply paste in the address so it's easy for me to find uh, my text files. I'm going to highlight all three of these, these resampling tasks, and I'm going to open them into ID Tasker. Oh yes, I forgot. So I think you can only load one task at a time. So I'm going to, let's see, it loaded task number one. So let's load in, let's load in tasks two and three. Very good. So now we have task one, two, and three. What we need to do with task one is simply run it by using the execute button up at the top. All we need to do is make sure that this task is highlighted and then we click execute. In order to get ID Tasker to display what we have collected, we're going to make sure that we are in the objects tab. And you want to make sure that you have unchecked this box, which by default is checked. If you're not seeing this down here, you need to click load objects. And this is going to load in all of the information that we need ID Tasker to collect. Next, we are going to select our second task, this resample number two, the filter. We are going to click play again. Now this is showing us each instance of each image. Um, as you can see, this is what this script is accomplishing that literally no other scripts are doing. This has collected the sunset image twice. Most other scripts only do this one time, but this is going to allow me to resample both instances and separate both of those sunset images, which is really incredible. By default, each of the images are checkboxed, which means that they are going to be um, resampled. If you do not want one of these images to be resampled, simply uncheck it before the next step. All right, now we have Task number three selected in our list. As you can see, Rob has written us a little note down here. Um, we need to have inches set as our ruler units. Um, he's also made the ability where you can change this number. If you don't want to resample down to 300, you can resample to 330, you can resample to whatever you need to. Um, so this can be used for other jobs other than just printing. So with our third task selected, we are now going to use this button at the bottom. Do not click the play button on the top. Whenever we're interacting with objects, docs, text, anything in ID Tasker, we are going to use this button at the bottom, which tells us that we are interacting with objects and not interacting with the task itself. This is it. Let's go ahead and click the button. Uh, for some reason, we get this little warning pop up about forward or reverse revere this is simply asking you do you want to run this script um probably what this is intended for is just a warning warning yes you are about to change these objects i'm going to click yes 
Now the task is running as indicated by this red rectangle right here. And this is the cool part. ID Tasker is going to go ahead and launch Photoshop for me. You don't even have to have Photoshop open to work with this script. It'll go ahead and do everything for you. Okay, update. Turns out that ID Tasker was not set up yet to support TIFFs. So I reached out to Rob and he got back to me right away and went ahead and coded in TIFF support. So this is actually a great opportunity for us to go re-download ID Tasker with the new updates. Let's hop over here to idtasker.com. This is where we are going to download the new version of the program. I'm simply going to click on this big button, download, and then I'm going to replace this exe file with the one that I already have. Simply going to cut it. Now, remember, you can put this application anywhere you want to. I just keep it in my scripts panel for sake of ease of finding it. I'm going to open up my scripts panel and I'm going to paste that in there and tell it to replace it. Okay, now let's relaunch ID Tasker now that we have the new updated version with TIFF support. Because I have a new version of ID Tasker, I'm probably going to have to enter my product key again. The first time you launch the script, or the software, I should say. The first time you launch it, um, you probably need to launch it from the file explorer. You might have to tell it to run as administrator to get it to work. Um, and often Windows Firewall will try to block it every time that you run this for the first time. You're going to have to override it and tell it to run it anyway. Yes, it's not a malicious software. All right, so here's where I input the name and the key uh, that comes with my product. Sorry, I'm not going to let y'all see my key. I'm going to do that over here on my other screen. Once the key has been entered properly, ID Tasker should open up again as normal. All right, let me skip ahead here and get back to where we were. Okay, so this is where we were before we had loaded in each of our four instances of the images. We can see that we have actual PPIs of 300, but the effectives are all mismatched. So what we need to do now is make sure we are on the third task in this list. And we have everything check marked over here. Simply we are going to click this forward button to interact with the objects on the bottom. We're going to tell it, yes, we would like to perform this task. And now we should be able to watch Photoshop flipping through each of those items um, and duplicating and renaming them if needed. If you click off of ID Tasker while you're using it or running a script, sometimes it will interrupt the script and it will ask you to um, restart the script. So it's better to just stay here on the screen and let it run as it does something. There, this is the this is the result here. We can see now that both the effective and the actual PPIs match, which is what we want for a print job. We also see that ID Tasker has created new versions of each of these. So that's good. I think this is a new feature actually, um, that regardless of whether or not there's multiple instances, of these items, it will create a new one for you. That way you're not ruining your original document and you now have a new 300 document. You'll notice now also that my sunset spread, there's two of them, not just one like there used to be. And this is what we need when we are doing a true 300 print job. And as far as I know, this is the only software that can do this. So thank you very much, Rob. Thank you, ID Tasker. If y'all are interested in working with Rob and testing out or buying his software, which can do much, much more than just this, I'll leave a link below um, so you can get a hold of him and find his softwares. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.